So for this video, I'm going to show you how I go about painting these little tiny guys. These are about the size of a, a Hot Wheel car. So that's kind of the 164-ish scale that we're working with. To paint them, I need to put them on something. And so what I usually do, I just have a cork here with some blue tack and a penny or a coin of any type. And what I do is I just glue the guy onto the, the, the coin. And so I just kind of add this guy to the cork. The primer that I use is an automotive primer. It's a, it's a two in one filler sandable primer. So it's a filler sander. I've noticed that this stuff is a little bit thinner than some um, primers. And it goes on really well and it also helps hide some of the blemishes. Like if you do have any sort of striation lines on some of the prints that you got, this filler sandable primer will hide some of that stuff at times as well. So bear with me, I'm gonna go outside and uh, give this guy a prime and then we'll get the uh, paints out. And I'll go over the brushes that I use to um, paint with. I really only use like two brushes. And I don't, uh, one brush really, one brush size with a couple of brushes. Uh, it's getting warm out. I can feel summer coming. Not happy with that. I don't like summer. I like the winter. There we go, spraying them up. More paper towels. So a lot of you, uh, wet palettes are a thing, right? And they sell wet palettes. I just use a Tupperware container for my wet palette. If you don't know what a wet palette does, wet palettes help keep your paint wet. That's about what they do. In the climate that I'm in, California, you need it because it gets hotter than hell. Like living in California is hell enough alone, but where I'm at, it gets freaking hotter than hell. So I use a paper towel in the bottom of a Tupperware container. And again, you can buy your own wet palette if you want, but the way I see it, I'd rather spend my money on paints and paint brushes rather than having to buy another wet palette. And there's a benefit to these high sides. I, I kind of like the high sides. Paper towel, Tupperware, parchment paper, baking paper, just stuff you bake on. Throw a little piece of parchment paper on there. I like to keep the parchment paper small. I find that a small piece of parchment paper to put the paint on forces me to not load the palette with paint. I, I, I just keep like a little dab of paint on there because I only got a little area to put it in. And so it just helps me save paint actually with using just a little tiny bit of parchment paper, especially for this guy. Like you don't need a lot of paint for him. And it is curling up a little bit, but if you get it wet enough, there you go, your wet palette. And as I said, the, the high sides, I like the high sides because I could rest my hand on it and it almost acts as a brace as I can paint. So I got my palette here and then I just put my hands on the sides and then I can paint with a brace. So it's just, it's something that I've used and I really like it. I don't like the big wet palettes that cost, you know, whatever, $20, $30 from uh, Games Workshop or Army Painter. I think it's just, for me, I'd rather just use this and take that 20, 30 bucks from, that I would spend on a wet palette and use it on something else. I've got a lot of different brushes, but I'll tell you, out of all these brushes, I only use three of them. This one, this one, and he's hiding on me. Where is he? He has a red handle. Where you at? Where is, there he is. This one right here. These are the only three that I use. And to be honest with you, these two brushes right here are exactly the same. They're not even a different brush. Like they're the type, the same type of brush. They're a number two round. Let me see, yeah, two round. And this one's a two round as well. 
The only difference between this one and this one is that this one's a little bit older and it doesn't form as tight of a, a tip anymore. But I like to have two in kind of various stages of decay. Like for this one right here, this works pretty good for almost anything that I'll need. And then if I need a little bit de more detail, I'll go to this newer two round, which has a better tip, a more defined tip. By the time this one finishes and is ready to be thrown out, this one will be in the same condition that this one is currently. So I just kind of keep two rotated in and out. When I do need to go to detail, I got this one right here. It's just an artist loft. It's a 20 aught. And honestly, this one's almost dead. I think the, the tip is getting a little frayed as well. But again, it's just for those little tiny details. For the most part, I'll probably paint this whole entire miniature with just this number two round brush. So where do we start? When I approach miniatures, I usually paint, I usually approach them working from the inside out. So anything that would be like inside or harder to get to, I start first and then I work my way outside of the sculpt. And I'll drop down two colors. I'm gonna drop down a true blue Master Series Reaper paint. And then we're gonna do a Prussian blue. Russian blue. So I will add a little bit of blue here. I'm just going to do one leg at a time. Just a little bit of blue. And just wipe it off. Not even going to clean it. And I'm going to come in with this darker blue. Dab a little bit. And we've got ourselves the blue pants. And it is okay to be sloppy in this technique that I'm going to show you. You know, you can just be a little bit sloppy. You don't have to get like deep inside every crevice. Because I've got a fix for that. There's a couple ways that you can paint miniatures. There's a... There's the way that... You can paint them like you're... It's a fine art. Fine artists, you know, every... Everyone's a Monet or a Picasso, where you can take the approach that maybe like a Hollywood special effects artist would, where you want it to look good, but it doesn't need to be perfect because there's a time crunch. And if you made every zombie a Picasso, then no zombie movies would ever be made because it would just take too long. So there's this balance that you gotta find between the quality of your work and the time you wanna put into it. Not much to explain what we're doing here. It's just the t-shirt. I'm going a little bit close, a little bit slow as I go around the collar of the neck just to make sure I kinda of paint the collar in. I've got confident strokes. I'm not, I'm not kind of hatching as I go around the, around the, like this, I'm, I, I just pick a line and I just run with it. So it's a, it's a very confident brush stroke around those areas where the color ends. See a little bit of blue that might have came off, so I'm just gonna add a little touch up on that back of the there. A little touch up there. And I think we're good. And so the next oh no, I got another place I need to touch up. Right on the inside. There. Alright. So now, what's going to happen is I'm going to go take him outside really quick. That's all of the actual painting we, we're going to do. It's just getting the flat colors down. 
Now I'm gonna do my first round of spray. It's any sort of varnish that you have. I like a matte varnish. I'm just gonna run out here and do a quick round of matte varnish on them. The, reason for that is my next step is an enamel wash. Sometimes the enamels don't work well with the acrylics. They don't mix well. And so I found that if you add a little bit of varnish over the first coat, it helps to protect your base coat as you're working with the um, enamel varnish. All right, AK Interactive. Dark brown for green wash. Link in the description below to Amazon affiliate. You will see an enamel dark brown wash. You will also need for this next step, turpenoid or odorless turpentine, turpenoid, any sort of cleaner that's meant for oil paints. Odorless is gonna be the best bet for you. Lastly, but not least, you're gonna need a brush that you don't care about. You're gonna need a burner brush that you don't use for anything but this exact purpose. Um, you really don't wanna mix the, from what I've heard, the oil and the um, acrylic brushes don't mix too well. So find yourself a good brush or a cheap brush that you don't want and mark that as your enamel wash brush and don't use it for anything else <clears throat> and so let's see if he is dry yeah, sort of all right all right there you go bub you're done and we'll be saving that because we'll be needing that a little later now make sure you have some paper towels handy because this can get a little bit messy I usually work on a little piece of wood because I've spilt this turpentine multiple times and it makes a mess when you spill it and it's easier to have a piece of wood to just make a mess on instead of having it make a mess on your nicer mat or something along those lines. So that's why <clears throat> I have this little piece of wood. It's for those times that I do screw up. This stuff, there's no science to it. You just load your brush up and just drip it on and it's gonna look like your miniature is ruined. But rest assured, <clears throat> by the time we're done with this, he's gonna look pretty rad. I didn't use this yet, but I think we're at that point where we can now. I usually let it sit for a little bit just because, you know, obviously air, you blow air on liquid, it's gonna go all over the place. But because it's set to the point now, I think we can add a little bit of hot air on this guy to finish him off. So now you've got your turpenoid, odorless. You've got a couple Q-tips. That's all you need, Q-tips and turpenoid. Life is good. Trust me on that one. Just a little bit. I'm only going to be a very small dab of turpenoid. Just a little tiny bit. I'm going to actually rub some of it off and onto the sides. Don't need a lot. And all you're going to do is just slightly, barely any pressure, just start rubbing, rubbing this, um, rubbing the uh, enamel wash off. There we go. And there they are. He 
is for the most part going to be done. I'm going to have to um, do a varnish on him. So I'm going to do a varnish 